Hi students, happy Tamil and Singhala New Year wishes to you all. Have a good and safe year. Okay students, so today uh, lecture, I'm going to discuss two things. The first one I'm going to make a, a summary lecture of the handout number one. So the once I finish the summary, I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, or I'm going to explain the answer for some um, past paper or in semester so the mid semester or the assignment uh, questions because uh, then you can understand how to give the answer for the questions uh, because that's uh, I, I actually I have two types of questions uh, the MCQ questions and also the structured type questions so so then i can give a clear idea how to uh, give the answer for the multiple choice questions um, choice question and uh, the structured questions because actually the thing is uh, when i'm going to explain those things because the last three years uh, i teach this subject uh, you know, this uh, fourth time, fourth time, um, this subject uh, origin has uh, so the most of the students uh, mm. uh, fail to give the proper answer for the questions. The second thing is the exam point of view, you should uh, try to give the proper answer for the question only. So some students, uh, they very well know the answer, but even they fail to give the proper answer during the particular exam time. So I don't know, there are some, some reasons are there. Maybe they may have some other reasons. So with the particular exam time, there you should know the way how to give the answer, how to give the, how to give the proper answer for the question which asked by the examiner. So similarly, the MCQ also, they feel that sometimes the, some students, they score good marks for the structure type questions but uh, they score very low marks low marks or less marks for the multiple choice questions uh, so when we uh, mark the paper we can easily understand uh, and sometimes the, the first time they underline the correct answer then second time they post the answer then underline another answer so that's the, the confusion that we can clearly see the students um, they might uh, might be confused to choose the answer so so that that's what um, i have decided to make this uh, demo demo demonstration how to uh, how to approach the questions multiple choice questions with the, the structured type questions okay students the, the first one this is our first handout and our title is uh, our introduction to origin as events so under this handout, so far we discussed a lot. Almost we finish. So the the one by one, I I I try to recall the things what we discuss uh, so far. So then here the first we start uh, in the, from here. The the the, the first uh, video lecture I clearly explained the things uh, the term Azurans so or Azuran services and then attestation service and finally we discuss auditing so that the help with the help of a diagram the oval type a diagram uh, i clearly explain the, the relationship between these three uh, terms as one service attestation service and um, the audit or auditing so the please remember uh, this is the, the, the first uh, important things we discuss. So then we move to this, this especially we started to concentrate on this uh, audit, uh, audit to external audit to audit to uh, financial statement or company audit. So we discuss a lot uh, uh, that particular concept. So then uh, we discuss some another important things there. The two, this pairs, uh, auditing and accounting. So when we study auditing, so we should have a clear idea. Uh, that's a difference between accounting and auditing. So 
uh, with the similarities and uh, uh, differences between this sorting and accounting uh, what way these two concepts are uh, connected or interconnected so i hope you have some idea mm. then we move to this one the definition of origin the number of key terms we clearly explain so then we discuss about this objectives of auditing so please remember so the primary objective of um, auditing or audit is uh, to provide opinion whether the books of accounts so it means the financial statements and other documents uh, show true and fair view of the business that's all that's a, the prime objective and the primary objective of auditing and uh, as well as we discuss some secondary or incident incidental objectives so i hope you remember so then we discussed uh, another in the important one the, the fraud uh, versus errors so i hope that when we say the intentional one the in the particular organization with the employees or management or other the, the people when they do some when they commit some they commit intentionally so when they involves uh, intentional for the intentional activity intentional uh, intentionally they do something for the benefit of getting uh, in order to get some benefits so that is uh, if it is intentional then definitely indicate a fraud otherwise if it is unintentional so that um, clearly indicates the, um, the errors so, so we already discussed some example for fraud and errors so then we discuss this uh, needs or necessities for an auditing so number of needs or necessities are there so i hope uh, you um, you are able to explain that one so then we move to this one important part that uh, demand for auditing and assurance so this uh, this is this is also important um, area in the exam point of view uh, so here that to means the, the demand for auditing and assurance the, the thing is the there are some conditions we discuss and some ways the conditions so you can you can say there's some factors lead to demand for um, auditing and assurance so four conditions are there uh, so the first one is a conflict of interest or so in need for reliability so we discuss something to mean conflict of interest so second one's consequence and third one complexity and uh, fourth one the remoteness so i hope uh, uh you, you can able to briefly explain all each um, every uh, every condition so, so those condition uh, finally lead to a demand for origin assurance so this is a one way so another way we discuss after that um, theoretical ways so, so that uh, the same title uh, this uh, theoretical ways uh, you should be able to explain uh, demand for origin assurance so the exam time examiner um you may ask a question uh, so the clearly the examiner may ask a question so examiner ask a question uh, there is agency theory the information hypothesis and the insurance hypothesis are used to explain the uh, demand for auditing and assurance comment it so the kind of the, such a way if the examiner ask a question so you should be able to uh, give the answer by using these theories so what does it mean what what's, what what the is each theory says so the such a way you, you should clearly understand the way of the way the examiner asks question so i hope your three theories are there so briefly you, you should be able to explain each and every theories so then we discuss some features of auditing so a lot of things we discuss uh, so i hope you remember that one so then important one is the benefit of auditing so the, when you say when we study audit so we should we should um, know what are the benefits or advantages of auditing to different people within a particular company or the business man or the general benefit so then we discussed uh, what are the limitations of auditing so number of limitations we discussed so just i hope you remember so especially the we discussed the non-detection uh, non of errors and fraud so as a general public or as a users so the users we believe auditor uh, detect or find out all the errors and fraud that's a wrong one so we discussed this kind of um, the misunderstanding which the expedition kept i hope you remember 
so but uh, if the staff did something the management did something intentionally so it very difficult to find it very difficult to find so that's what uh, we can't expect or they can find old 100% errors and for that's a misunderstanding about auditors activity so another one is they are here mm, here uh, no assurance. So another one is the uh, we thought uh, we actually as a user we think that uh, auditor give hundred percent assurance. Uh, it means uh, auditor give the future um, the, the guarantee um, about the future uh, profitability or the prospect of the particular firm or business organization. Never auditor give that kind of guarantee. Just auditor check the financial statement of the document and then give the opinion. The financial statements in the law comply with the generally accepted accounting principles. That's all. So we discuss these things. Then we discuss this additional information. That's a picture we discuss about the picture. So the picture clearly says the the different opinion of the general public about auditor's role at the same time. The actually auditor what auditor delivered under his or her legal responsibilities. So we, we we know we should know no because auditors uh, they have to work under particular legal and legal 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 and responsible they are they have they have to adopt to they have to comply uh, those legal um, at our the legal rules and regulations so uh, legal legal they have to adopt those uh, rules and regulations for example the origin standards of them. So the auditors uh, have to comply uh, auditing standards when they do the audit process, when they do the audit. So that's what uh, they can't go beyond the, the standards. So some other rules and regulations are there, rules and audit act is there. So they have to properly adapt those things, they have to properly comply. So that's uh, based on that one, auditors um, can give the opinion, they can work out. So within the particular system, so we should understand user we should understand that one so when, when we fail to understand that then it will lead to the expectation gap yes okay so simply we discuss the expectation gap uh, uh, this is a gap uh, difference between the expectation of the users of audit report and the actual outcome delivered by the auditor and uh, his or her legal responsibility that's important his or her legal responsibility so the simply you can say that this is a misunderstanding of the users of the on the Azure and engagement. So as a user, uh, we misunderstood the, on the Azure and engagement. The wrongly understood. So then we discuss what are the reasons. So the, 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 the main reason is an unrealistic expectation to use it. So there's something that's center an examine as a question. So there's an example for the expectation gap. So each reason is that. Uh, example, mm -hmm. example. You have to the for the four or five reasons are there. So, for example, examples of expectation gap. So here, there's something we discuss. So these are the wrong uh, expectation of the users. So these are the example of expectation gap. So then we, so when we say the expectation gap, so we can feel the divided into three types. Um, one is a uh, knowledge gap. So that says uh, what public things auditors do and what auditors actually do. There's a different, the difference between this one indicated by the knowledge gap. So there's a performance gap. What auditors actually do and what auditors are supposed to do. This, uh, this is uh, uh, said as um, performance gap and the evolution gap says what auditors are supposed to do and what public wants auditors to do. These three things will be at this thing with the expectation gap. So then the reason the ways we can reduce this expectation yeah we already discussed so then finally we discuss some important the concepts uh, 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 the audit uh, such as accountability then uh, we discuss stewardship and then finally we discuss some um, agency in the view of uh, public uh, limited companies PLC. so the exam point of view, the examiner, and suppose ask the patients so, uh, discuss uh, these three concepts in the view of public company, then you should be able to explain each and every the concept. Okay, students, these are the summaries um, we discussed uh, under the, the first chapter. 
so i hope you got some idea about the chapter one so now i am turning to this part this next part that is a the next part is that uh, the question answer part uh, yes and the questions and answers actually i got these uh, questions uh, from previous uh, past papers so past papers so in semester paper questions so mid semester paper questions so even assignment questions I, I mixed all the one i have maximum actually i am not going to explain all the questions uh, just i take some example 10 or 11 mcq pattern questions and uh, three or four uh, structured question for your uh, uh, easy understanding so that's the purpose of uh, Uh, doing this one uh, so the how to approach the questions uh, for your exam and so in addition in your handout also some exercise questions are there two to three or three or four questions are there uh, but in your handout you can see those questions are the direct questions so you can easily answer you can easily answer those questions so that so that kind of question also come for your exam so don't think uh, don't worry too much so because that that is easy one everybody can easily approach those uh, direct questions but a uh, problem most of the students struggle with the uh, indirect types of questions especially the structure type indirect questions so today's session i'm going to explain how to answer uh, for those indirect questions uh, indirect structured uh, structure type questions so the how the examiner actually expect uh, from the students Uh, so that's a, that's a, that it, it definitely will help you all so the key the first wish is there some uh, multiple choice questions so, so i have the latin alone question uh, the first question says the clear you can read the questions uh, so the another one before i start this uh, this one the uh, one advice i would i would like to tell you all that when you approach this uh, when you try to answer for this uh, types of mcq questions um, the first what you should do because the mcq the, the, the mostly the mcq instruction is uh, you should uh, underline or circle the most appropriate answer or answers we had you have to carefully read the instruction the most appropriate what uh, what does it mean most appropriate mean sometimes the particular multiple choice questions have the four choices the sometimes the all four choices may be correct this you should understand but the instruction says instruction says most appropriate you have to choose the most appropriate so that's a keep in your mind so the uh, what is a better way so the exam time is exam, the time is going very 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 cool, fast no very fast the time is going so in order to save the time what you should do so the first you should eliminate the inappropriate answers that that's a good step this is my experience and my idea if you don't you can use it otherwise you can you can have some different ideas yes but the, my way this I, i i think that this is a better way easy way so then you can easily answer the question and also you can save your time so the first better one the were the, the first you can uh, eliminate eliminate the uh, irrelevant answers inappropriate answer first one second one third one so the, the once you eliminated uh, two inappropriate answers or to get the four choices uh, the remain you get you, you can have remain two choices so then is easy you can easily choose uh, which one is the best one or to get the four choices so if you use this uh, to this approach the, the which which approach Uh, you can you are going to eliminate the inappropriate one first out of four the first to eliminate this one you can directly definitely know this is not appropriate then uh, then you can remain you can have three options and then further you can remove remove another one because this is inappropriate then you can have two option only options only so then is easy one you can choose which one is better is a better way uh, so the first question you can see we will try to apply that idea here so the better with the first question says the which of the following statements best describe the term azuren services the first you should what what you should do the you should you should underline the key terms the particular question the my view in my view this is the first question this azuren services this is a key term so you should underline 
that what's the name which is the following statement best describe the accident services so in the handout we discuss no? the assurance services are the assurance services are independent professional services uh, help to enhance the quality of information so we the, the definition the, the, the handout we discuss but uh, the thing is the, the multiple choice question the mcq pattern question you can't uh, uh, sometimes you, you you can't uh, say the uh, uh, where the answer where the answer because the, the because the you know that because the four options are there four choices are there huh? some of they are related with your uh, idea so because the indirectly the examiner uh, give the options so so out of those those options so four or five options you have to choose the most appropriate best best answer. So here, the, the first one that you can read, assembly of financial statements based on assumption of a responsible party. What's the question? Which of the following statements best describe the term assurance services? So now I am talking about, uh, we are talking about an auditor. No? The first answer A says, the assembly of financial statements based on assumption of a responsible party. The responsible party means the management. The answer is the assembly of financial statement. This is not a uh, this is not a work of the auditor, no, because assurance services is a independent it's normally done by the independent party, no, independent party. Because that's independent, it means the auditor, no. Here the first answer is assembly of financial statement based on the assumption of the response. It's not, uh, not connected with the assurance services. Something is a uh, uh, preparation of financial statement or so what is something like that so you can remove ignore this answer first one is not appropriate second one the services uh, designed for the improvement of operations resulting in better outcomes services designed for the improvement of operations what's the purpose of assurance service assurance service is an independent provisional service that enhances improve the quality of information but this answer says services designed for the improvement of operations resulting in better outcomes so this is also not much relevant no there's some type of uh, as one services are there in audit some audits are there the value for money audit especially they focus on efficiency effectiveness and economy but here the question is which of the following statement best describe the term assurance services so this is not much uh, appropriate so just wait and see we will go to the third answer third answer says answer c the services designed to express an opinion okay on historical financial statements based on the result of an audit Services designed to express an opinion on historical financial statement based on the results of the audit. No, based on the results of the audit, uh, mm, uh, those services are designed to express an opinion. With the confusion, this is a wrong answer because because uh, because the uh, audit is actually come under the attestation service. No, attestation service is a part of the assurance service. So that's why this answer is definitely wrong. You can reject this one. A we rejected already. C also rejected. We has we has some we have some doubt about the answer B. So then we move to the answer D. Answer D says independent professional services. Yes, this is a thing. So directly there, independent professional services that improve the credibility of information. So in the handout we discuss improve the quality of information, enhance the quality, quality the information, but simply it's a credibility. The trustworthiness of information or its context for decision makers or users. So simply you can underline, choose this answer. Answer D is the correct one. Okay, so which of the following statements the this, uh, best describe the term assurance services? The answer is a D independent provisional services that improve the credibility of information or its context for decision makers. So answer C is wrong, answer A is wrong, those of you now we can say it's B. Services designed for the improvement of operations. Because the thing is, uh, if you have some doubt about these answers, same time you have clear idea, you, have, you are very confident about 
particular answer directly underline and move to the next questions don't waste your time unnecessarily please uh, the, that's my advice i tell you all that you are very clever but uh, mcq type of questions when you approach this uh, this mcq types of actions so you have to be very clear that because time is running so you have to save the time you have to finish your work on time so that's keep in your mind time so time is very important so we go to the second question second question says so second question says the fundamental objective of the audit of a company is to uh, there's a fundamental objective so you can underline the key term objective of audit of a company we discuss in the handout no the audit of a company is the primary and secondary objective we discuss so four answers are given out of these four answers we have to choose one of the best answer so the first one say protect the interest of the minority shareholders so let's do and read it no the protect uh, protect uh, in the protect safeguard uh, the interest of the minority shareholders you know you can remember no um the hand of video discuss under the benefits of audit so because we need to audit the investors the protect uh, um investment yes because this is not the fundamental object so audit so benefits so this may be the benefit to audit okay just get the key bit we move to the next answer so detect and prevent errors and fraud yeah this was under the conclusion because we discussed so you can remember because under the secondary or incidental objective we discussed that to detect and prevent errors and fraud but you know, that's that actually they, this is not um, classified under the secondary or incidental objective not the prime the question is the fundamental or primary objective of audit keep in your mind in the primary objective we discussed uh, provide opinion and the financial statement information as true and fair so that's a primary objective so you uh, until you have to wait to catch it until to until you catch the particular answer you have to uh, you have to wait so answer c the assess the effectiveness of the company's performance yes assess the assess assess mean the evaluate the effectiveness of the company's performance that is not the prime objective of audit it may be the part of the objective so but uh, there we can say that's a prime so then the answer d attest the uh, attest to, to the credibility confirm the credibility of the company so perhaps confirm the credibility credibility and trustworthiness it means the joint care the, the, the attest attest confirm Uh, the confirming the credibility of the company's accounts, company's accounts, and statements, and the accounts. So, so answer is the fundamental objective of audit of the company is to attest to the credibility of company. The term is very important, credibility. So, the audit uh, you have to remember some key terms: credibility, the information quality. So, this uh, because that's uh, easy, then you can answer for some questions because you know the. Uh, if you remember the key terms of credibility, it's a, that's a audit. Is it? So when we say audit, that's a directly indicate the credibility of the information. So in order to reduce the the credibility gap, in order to reduce the credibility gap, that's audit is important. <clears throat> Because of credibility gap, we need the audit. That means in order to enhance or improve the quality of information in terms of Uh, relevance and reliability okay so the third question that you can read the question the concept of stewardship yes means that a company's directors the concept of stewardship means that a company's directors for so this question you can underline the term uh, stewardship yes we discuss under the additional information the powerpoint the stewardship uh, what do you mean by stewardship simply you know the stewardship what's a, what does it mean So look after the company assets. That's all. It was a public company. Yes, the owners, the shareholders, equity shareholders, like the particular people, but that is board of directors. They they normally send those people to the company to direct the company on behalf of themselves. At the time, they they hand over the all the property of the company to them. So 
we have to look after the company assets so then you can see the answer the answer is is are responsible for ensuring that the company complies with the law no that's not, not relevant so immediately you can reject a b sorry this should be b no b are responsible for ensuring that the company pays its tax by the due date no no that's not that's not says it says something relevant answer d is, is this answer third answer says safeguard the company's assets yes and manage them on behalf of the shareholders so that answer is there immediately you can underline the answer then you can move to the next question i need to read that one no yes so question number four which of the following is not a benefit of an audit yes the number of benefits we discussed no yes the question is which of the following is a not a benefit this, this is a the other opposite questions maybe you had to this because mcq the examiner uh, may try to confuse yourself by uh, giving these mixed questions so there's a both questions on the different not a benefit it's opposite type questions so not a benefit of an audit the first one you can read increase credibility of the financial statement this is a benefit this advantage of audit increased credibility increase quality of information answer b deficiencies in controls may be identified during testing deficiencies mean is a weakness eh? weakness in controls the companies may have the different internal controls so if they have some weakness in the internal controls definitely those can be identified during the audit testing so this is another advantage yes i hope you remember under the secondary objectives incidental objectives the third one should be the uh so be connected with this answer yes but i put a c code may be detected during the audit okay this is another advantage that's what the purpose of audit also to detect for an address fraud may be detected keep in your mind the may be detected you can't say the audit, the, the audit uh, 100% should be detected no may be detected if they did the employees or management of the company if they did something intentionally so how the auditor can detect those things no so the answer a b z all are correct what about a d sampling is used ah yes this is a problem this is a not a benefit that is a big drawback behind the audit sampling is used i hope i i already explained because the audit actually the what the auditors order is going to do Auditor is going to do the audit process maximum within two three months maximum three months. So within three months, the auditor what they he or she should do they have to check all the twelve months transaction. You can imagine how many uh, items are there. No? Is it possible? No. Or how we, how we, it, it is possible to check all the twelve months uh, three sixty two days transaction within three months. That's what auditors use sampling basis randomly take some item and check so there's a sampling they use so it is a big rope because based on the sample suppose out of thousand items transaction with a uh, with a randomly take two three all three or two three items are correct so then they finally can all thousand transactions are perfect so because that that's a problem is there so this is not a benefit so answer is d what is question number five here number five says what is meant by expression expectation gap yes this is also under the additional information what is mean by the expression expectation gap so we will discuss what's what is the meaning of expectation gap expectation gap simply you can say is a gap or different between um users of the audit report the interpublic public audit report and the actual outcome delivered by the auditor under his or her legal responsibilities. So there's a misunderstanding on as an engagement of the users. So this expectation kept keep in your mind. Definitely examiner confused yourself by giving different answers. So you have the, the you should have clear um, idea about the concept. What the concept says, expectation gap says, expectation of the different or gap between the user's expectation of the audit report and the uh, um, actual outcome delivered by the auditor under his or her legal responsibilities.
So the first answer says A, the gap between how the directors of a company perform their duties and how the shareholders expect them. No, 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 there's not a connection between the directors of a company perform their duties. No, no, that's a, something, it's a petition gap, something related to the auditors, um, um, or the producers' expectation, general public uh, expectation about audit report and the uh, actual outcome delivered by the auditors. So this answer is wrong. This is something about the directors of a company perform their duties. Same read your hotel. That is answer B. The gap between how the directors of a company perform. So then immediately you can reject B also because B also says how the directors of a company perform. This is not, a, not connected with the directors. The problem with the, between the users and the general public and the auditors. No? So then B you can reject. What about the C? The gap between the public perception, users' perception, general public perception, expectation, the role of the company auditors, yes, and their statutory role and responsibility. As a user, we expect more from the auditor, but we don't know uh, what is their legal uh, statutory role and responsibility. Without knowing their auditor's statutory role and responsibility, we expect more, perceive more. So that is indicated by the expectation gap. So answer is C. We can write the C. What about question number six? The question number six says the responsibility for the preparation of the financial statements and accompanying food notes belongs to. So it's this simple question. So directly you can answer. No need to think too much. So who one prepare the finance statement? Who one is responsible to prepare the finance statement? The company, the management, including board of directors. So directly you can say the answer. So management. Just to then underline and immediately you should move to the next question. Don't waste the time. The question number seven. So seven says which of the following is a duty of the auditor? Yes. Actually, this is we didn't study about this so duty of the auditor in the first time, right? But I hope we will discuss about uh, this, this this matter in the handout number three. Uh, so this handout number three is the um, audit of uh, limited liability company. As for the company, we will discuss under that particular handout. We even do the just, just general questions, no? Because another one, the exam point of view, you can't expect all the questions come from uh, handout. No? Or we, you don't think that all the questions we you would have studied that's that's wrong the general question also come that definitely that is connected with your the chapter so you are the the content so it's you should be, you should be able to answer those general questions also this is a very simple one the which of the following is a duty duty you no know, of the audit the first one says prepare a set of account that is a drawn pair Prepare a set of accounts. No, that is not a duty of auditor. Then, the, uh, the preparation of accounts is the duty of whom? Management. That's a duty. Management's duty is to prepare the accounts. No, that's wrong. Second one say help management to form better relations with shareholders. That's not a duty. No, auditor. Why? How can you say this is an auditor's duty? Help management to form better relations with shareholders. No, this is not a duty. So the second one also rejected. Third one, give an opinion on the integrity of management. So give an opinion is okay, but the auditor is a duty is the giving an opinion on the financial statement, not the integrity of management. So this is a problem rejected. What about whom? Give an opinion on the financial statement. That's all. It's a very simple question, no? Giving opinion, true or fair, about the finance statement information. That's all. So this answer is D. What about question number eight? Question number eight says, which one of the following statements about fraud is correct? So the fraud, the key term is fraud. You underline the fraud. Already we discussed errors and fraud. So the fraud, when you read the patient, the, the, when you see the term fraud, your mind says that yeah, fraud should be the intentional uh, activity or deception. 
to get a benefit, illegal benefit, so deception or dishonesty. So then which is the following statement about fraud. The first one, fraud can be intentional or unintentional. No, no, this wrong one. Fraud should be intentional. So A is rejected. But about B, fraud always involves misappropriation of assets. Fraud always involves, no, 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 no. not only the misappropriation of assets. So there's so many examples are there. The manipulation, alteration, this so misapplication of accounting policies, intentional misapplication. So, so we can't say that fraud always involves always involves misappropriation of assets. No, that's wrong. That's not correct. So then the third one, fraud always involves the use of deception. Okay, directly answer is there. Simply the high everything is in the high diet. So that's what I another time I um, stress you all. So when you read the handout, you have to understand. So because the, just the, the, the two time is enough. If you understood the things thoroughly, then fine. Two time is enough. So that, that's to take your time and then read the handout and then understand. So here the fraud involves uh, the use of deception to obtain an unjust or illegal account. That's all. So what about uh, D? Fraud is always, there's no need to go up there. That's answer is C, then we can nine. Question number nine. And the question number nine says, which of the following uh, examples of the expectation gap? This question over the, the kind of the previous question, question number seven or I think so, and seven or six. So which of the following are uh, examples of the expectation gap? So when we discuss about the expectation gap, so we discuss what's the meaning of expectation gap. But, uh, but the reason is an unrealistic expectation. An example we discussed. So those are the examples. No? So that's a following an example of expectation. Right? One by one, we can see the answer. Answer first answer is this: the audit report confirms. Audit report confirms the financial statements are accurate. Yes, this is a reason for the. Expectation gap. Users think so. I am a user, so I, I think so. Audit report. The audit the final output of audit is audit report. No, audit report confirms or make sure the financial statements are accurate. No, no, no. Audit report. In the audit report, auditors say the opinion whether the financial statements are prepared as per the accounting standard. And also the final statement showed the true and fair information. Doesn't mean accurate. That's what auditors say, the opinion. Accurate is the term is uh, the, the very big term, no? Accurate means uh, the accuracy, you no? Know? 100% correct. It doesn't mean the auditor says opinion, just opinion only. Sometimes the misstate, material misstatements are there. Yes, it's a, because that's auditor. If they did something, so auditor, uh, the auditor can find those things. So then we can see that what is report confirm the financial statements are accurate. This is a reason for the expectation gap. Second one, true and fair opinion means the company is coin concern. No, 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 no. This is a big term, coin concern. So the, the that's a coin concern mean that never the true and fair indicate the meaning of coin concern. Never auditor say anything about a coin concern. That's not a duty of the auditor. But the auditor do just the person check the financial statement and other records. Finally, say the whether those financial statements, uh, financial information on the financial statement for the true and fair. The true and fair mean the, the actually the what they did, whether they comply with the standard or not. The otherwise auditor never say about this coin concern. So the, the actually thing is. As a user, general public, the general people think so. True and fair opinion means the company is going then, sir. So this is a misunderstanding of the users. So this leads to the expectation. Third one, the auditor test all transactions. Actually, the you know the auditor never check all the hundred percent transactions. No? Auditor actually gives the sample. Randomly take some transaction and check those transactions. But what the users think? General public things auditor check all the transactions. So this is then is a, this is also the reason for the expectation. Here. What about the fourth answer? 
the auditor can be file a case can be sued for negligence if they issue an inappropriate opinion that is why so that for example the auditor if the if they provide an <coughs> inappropriate opinion about a company about a company financial statement definitely the you can file a case against the auditor in the courts so that's normally happen so this uh, this is not an example for the expectation this is a that, that the thing thinking is okay that's fine if the user thinks so that is fine so as a user i can the, the, the auditor of a commercial bank is a the um, Jung. the ancient Jung, if they provide the inappropriate opinion for the particular financial year if i think so so i can file a case against uh, the in the courts so that's a good that's a right thing but uh, the, we except this one or the before the previous three are the they are the users is a misunderstanding there's a wrong thing so these are definitely these three lead to the expectation gap so these are the example for the expectation gap so answer is one two three answer a <coughs> okay right then the question number 10 what's the question a reason for non-for-profit organizations to be audited is as a key term non-for-profit organizations we already discussed because uh, as per the company act number seven of 2007 audit is very audit is compulsory to the public and private company so but why, why are the organization also want to do the audit so they, they actually they in order to get some uh, a loan from the bank so that's answer is facilitating access to capital not to get a capital so they feel if they have the audit report they can easily get a loan from the bank so answer directly you can underline facilitating access to capital actually most of the students make a mistake this question also because in the final paper very simple questions i don't know what happened to them so they did trouble with this question also very simple question so then question number 11 yes the the asobac definition of auditing refers to auditing as a system in Vitakama, systematic process of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidence regarding ascertains then in the statement finish the question is what is mean by systematic process uh, as per this definition so asobac no mm. Mm, the uh, statement of uh, basic accounting concept definition of auditing refers to as a systematic process the under the features of auditing we discussed no auditing is a systematic process what is the meaning of systematic your location is what is mean with systematic mean there's a there should be a well-planned approach to conducting the audit so that's fine no? that is a systematic process the audit is a systematic process so under the features of auditing systematic mean there should be a well-planned approach to conducting the audit so this is somebody a general question no? if you can't see this definition in your handbook uh, the handout uh, then this, you should be able to um, answer for this 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 type of question also so don't think at all this because the, some questions are definitely come from there's a from the out of not out of syllabus but uh, general questions so it's okay because uh, the mcq is very important because you can see the last two three years paper um, the 20 question for 40 marks so each question here is two marks so it's a paper structure so to go to get the total 40 marks for multiple choice questions so if you uh, fail to score adequate marks in the mcq out of 40 if you fail to score enough marks so that's a problem no that's what uh, i'm telling you the place uh, take some idea about this mcq questions no? in the exam point of view okay so then we move to the structure question so that also somebody the, the someone is okay someone approach in a good way but uh, the mostly struggle in the structure question also they say type question so because the question is different but they write the answer the, the the answer is something different so they 
write on unnecessary unnecessarily they write very lengthy paragraph don't think so never examine expect those things just uh, there's a point the point format you can give the answer please try to give the proper answer for the questions only you know you know the lot of uh, um, um, concept or principle whatever it is don't try to apply all the things in the exam uh, paper in the, the that's a, the never the old uh, the exam expect that uh, that, uh, that that kind of uh, ideas so always examiners expect the, the proper exact answer for the questions so okay here we can say some structure type questions so this question also will come for you uh, uh seniors exam examination so you are seeing if you've already faced these questions mm, if you know somebody you can interview those people so the, how the, what, what kind of questions uh, what kind of problem they face to answer those questions okay okay but first first question you can say the although they are subsets of assurance services subsets of assurance services attestation and auditing services are highly structured and intended to be useful for large groups of decision makers this is a, this particular statement is given in the inverter comma so that's the i am going to read the statement again now, although they are subsets of assurance services attestation and auditing services are highly structured and intended to be useful <coughs> for a large group of decision makers okay just read the read this sentence this is a sentence this is given in the inverter comma try to get some idea now because the question they have the examiner <clears throat> is going to ask a question based on this um, sentence no then the question is that critically discuss the relationship between azure and services attestation services and financial statement auditing so then you you may be happy because already we discussed about these three things no azure service <coughs> attestation service auditing even you uh, you even even if you can't understand the uh, question thoroughly why to uh, give some idea i to try to give some idea exam point of view because the never you can expect all the questions are the direct questions no so the more than the maximum 30 marks questions you can expect uh, from the indirect types of questions no? because already you studied those things but uh, never the uh, direct questions no? this is somebody's indirect one uh, already you started it what is the meaning of asuran as well services such as services then what is the meaning of audit of financial statement or external audit finally we discuss with the help of diagram the oval so everything we already discuss we already studied exam point of view the examiner asked this type of question so then how to answer the question is uh, I, I uh, the highlight in red color critically discuss critically discuss so another one another important thing the exam in the exam final exam time so the, the first you should uh, see the, the marks weight for each question that is important one so because that uh, definitely this type of question definitely the asks for the asks ask for more marks eight or ten or twelve or even the 15 marks no? you critically discuss no? the final paper but your mid semester exam pattern is different suppose mid semester one hour so sometime examiner may ask this kind of uh, this this type of question for 20 or 20 even 25 marks so based on the marks uh, you should uh, try to uh, elaborate your answer your answers sometimes the examiner sometimes briefly discuss the relations between this one so the the marks the marks weight is uh, a five so then you have to limit your answer you know then don't try to uh, two three pages so that if you go for two three pages they really you need uh, 10 to 15 minutes so then how to answer for other questions so we were just a five marks no? so the keep in your mind is uh, marks weight is very important okay you should read the question understand the question and think about a uh, uh, look at a marks weight given by the examiner so this kind of question normally carries uh, huge marks you know, more than eight marks eight to ten or twelve even fifteen marks for your final paper 
mid semester as and before 2025 okay okay the critically discuss the relationship between azure and services attestation services and financial statement audit yes the how to uh, be the answer the first you can say no the first you can say the yes the the, the critical discuss no the first you should say something about is um, the uh, azure and services so the azure and services we already studied no the, under the azure and services you can say the azure and services means wait a minute no i, I the, the way i will show the way here the the, the, the previous slide uh, you have the meaning of azure and services so okay, you can say the azure and services the two points because the you can assume the total marks is uh, the 12 marks uh, for, for your final paper so the first you should say the azure and services that you can azure and services are independent the provisional services uh, the that help to improve the quality of information that's the first point you should say second point you should say the individuals who are responsible for making uh, decisions seek azure and services to help improve the reliability and relevance of the information at least two points you should say under the azure and services because the already we discussed in the powerpoint everything is there in the total marks is 12 no because the, the examiner asks the questions critically discuss three concepts three key terms are there azure and service attestation then or the first you should explain the azure and service then uh, when when you explain the azure and service at least two points the first point you can say azure and services are provisional independent provisional services that improve the quality of information that's first point second point individuals who are responsible to make decision seek azure and services to help improve the reliability and relevance of the information that's a purpose of azure. that's two points are there then the then the uh, then the just two point is enough then you can explain about the attestation service you, you you clearly know when you say the attestation service the first point you can write attestation service is a uh, the part of the azure and services this first point second point says in the attestation service in which the public accounting firm issues a written communication that expresses a conclusion about the reliability of, of a written assertion of another party second point third point you can say the attestation service uh, consists three categories the first one is the uh, audit of historical financial statement review of uh, historical financial statement and the third one other attestation services that's all that all that's all because under the uh, attestation service the second second term you, have, you can tell three points attestation service a part of the assurance service attestation service in, the, in which the public accounting firm auditor issues a written communication that express a conclusion about the reliability of a written assertion of another party just uh, just say something no just uh, because uh, the examiner understand the things not just because the person have idea about that no? so then you can third point is important no? you should say attestation service may consist three categories one is the audit of historical financial statement second one is a, a review of historical financial statement and third one is the other attestation services so then second concept is okay third point you move to that one third one which one is audit of historical financial statement then you can say knowledge of historical financial statement is a form of attestation service okay in which the auditor issues a written report expressing an opinion about whether the financial statements are in material conformity with accounts and that's all don't think that uh, don't think that uh, thing that uh, you should give the definition just uh, say something for each and every concept because the examiners that critically discuss you know, the relationship between the, this one critically you should critically discuss the relationship between these three concepts what are the what are those three concepts assurance service attestation and all but finally you can say if that's if, 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 if you want to give the perfect answer so the following diagram clearly shows the relations between these three concepts then you can draw that particular diagram already we discussed in the previous lecture video lecture <coughs> that oval format 
four circle or whatever, the three circles are there. The largest, largest one is the assurance service. The second one is the attestation. The very similar stone is the auditing. That's all. That's a perfect way of giving the answer. So you definitely bring in the full marks, no? Because to be a, the further we expect more, never, there's a maximum. You can, this, this is kind of corrections. That's all. Here you can see. I will see the here. The all three things are there. All points are in your handout. I, I will show that one here. You can see in your handout that you have to go to the uh, the <coughs> initial uh, initial PowerPoint here. Here, Azure and Services here. Under the Azure and Services, you can say two points. First point, you can say Azure and Services are independent provisional service that improve the quality of information for decision makers. The first point. Second point. Individuals who are responsible for making decisions seek Azure and services to help improve the reliability and relevance of the information. That's all. That's true that, that these, these two points are perfect with Azure and services. Then we can say attestation service. One category of Azure and service that the public account providers attestation service. First point. Second point says the attestation service is a type of Azure and service in which public accounting firm or audit firm issues a written communication. That express a conclusion about the reliability of a transaction of any other party. That's all. Third point you can say the three categories are there one is audit, review, and other attestation service. So then you can say the audit under the audit, just one is enough. Audit of historical financial statement is a form of attestation service, important years, in which the auditor uses a written report, audit report, express report expressing an opinion, yes about whether the financial statements are in material conformity with the accounting standard. That's all. Then finally, you can draw this diagram. That's a perfect answer. The total full mass, you can easily score 12 or 15 or 20 or 25. So this is a way of writing the answer for this kind of um, structured question or essay type questions. Very important, very good. Actually, <clears throat> this is important one, no? So then you can see, that um, second question you can see here. This is also the I uh, I, I, <clears throat> I remember. This is also this is also come from your past papers. No? This past paper, so mid semester paper questions. The question says the figure shows the overview of auditing and uh, how NT audit system works. Here you can see this figure says the figure shows the overview of auditing and how the entire audit system work. This is something is a gentle question. Accordingly, you are required to summarize the relation or relations in your own understanding of each term or concept. This is a particular diagram is given. Actually, I got this question from that additional video. I already put the link in your LMS. I don't know whether you have watched those videos or not, but uh, the two, two, two additional, in addition to my video lecture, you can see uh, the other two links are there. The first and second, uh, the one is belong to the ACCA, the webinars, webinar, webinar, other one is the, the Amanda, the Australian lecture video, this amazing videos, both are. So you should, uh, when you get a free time, please, uh, please watch those videos. So the, I got this question from that Amanda video, this uh, one hour, I think 45 or 50 minutes video. So just uh, watch that video. Then the, the Amanda clearly explained the relationship between these uh, uh, <coughs> the rectangles, you know. Rectangles are there, the each arrow, so number of arrows are there. Each arrow, arrow says, uh, indicates the meaning of something, you know. Here, when you look at this uh, diagram, so the question, you are required to summarize the relation or relations in your own understanding of each terms or concept. Each terms, how many terms are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This also, this kind of question also you can expect for your final paper, 10 marks or 12 marks, minimum eight marks, okay? Same, very simple one. Don't think too much here. So here you can see the output, the particular, uh, the but this rectangle say this rectangle uh, rectangle say the output audit report yes the particular arrow is there k 
here one arrow is there okay from auditing to audit uh, report so then you can say the first point you can put a number here number one so number one arrows what's what's the meaning is indicated by the number one arrows so the audit uh, report is the output of audit auditing or audit process that's all the first one we do number for this arrow the second second says audit report here financial statement you can say audit reports are prepared based on the financial statement that's all fine auditor is the opinion based on the financial statement no. audit report or auditor whatever the way you can say no but the connection between the financial statement auditor give the opinion on the financial statement based on the financial statement then number for three for this one this says preparers preparers mean manager of the company then arrow uh, the towards this financial statement then you can say the financial statements are prepared by management of the company so number three you put a number four for this arrow this arrow says according framework to financial statement so you can say the financial statements are prepared based on the accounting framework okay then this you put the number four five for this arrow this arrow says come from here to here according framework to prepare so the when the case you can say if you put the number five so the when the preparers management prepare the finance statement they should comply with the accounting stand that's all so then you can say this arrow come from the professional bodies in the ca sri lanka acc some other professional bodies are there cpa so here sema so the number the arrow come from here to here auditing and also come from here to here so this is actually the professional bodies especially sri lanka the ca sri lanka support to auditors to do the audit as well as they support with the preparers and management to prepare the financial statement they give the advice the support to the auditors as well as the management of the company so this is the circle the oval is there then these two arrows are there both two arrows uh, uh, towards the shareholders towards the shareholders then you can say financial statement also come to the shareholders audit report also come to the shareholders two numbers are there easily you can show the two points no so the finance statements and audit reports are finally published to the shareholders given to the shareholders uh, given to the shareholders that's all both, both one should be delivered to the shareholders and over to the shareholders no submitted to the shareholders so the finally this all well, this is a big arrow is there regulators so the, these are the regulators the regulators mean the government the regulators in sri lanka the government agencies the government bodies rules and regulations so they uh, look after the uh, total audit process total process that's all you normally know, I, I hope you the, once you watch that amanda video you can get more idea about this uh, uh, the picture it is a nice one because uh, you uh, able to answer this kind of this question so definitely you can have the idea about the total audit process okay in the third question the question says while the auditors face the problem of limitations in audit services yes the user is faced general public is faced with the problem of expectation gap this, uh, the, this expedition gap is important no this is also in better comma while the auditors face the problem of limitation of audit yes we will discuss number of limitation of audit no yes the users is faced with the problem of expectation gap yes the question is do you agree with this statement the comment it the first important one the question is do you agree with this statement first you should say whether you agree or disagree agree or not if you agree if you agree with this statement you should say yes then then only after once you say yes then you can move to the explanation so here the case is okay this is correct no auditors face the problem of uh, the second uh, the limitation of audit users face the problem of expectation gap this is yes. how to comment it so then the other the, how to approach this question the first you can suggest then you can say what is the meaning of expectation gap 
And then simply you can see the first thing expectation gap is the difference between expectation or perception of the users of the audit report and uh, the actual outcome delivered by the uh, auditor under his or her legal responsibilities. So further you can say, the simply you can say, the audit is the audit expectation gap uh, simply means the misunderstanding of the uh, misunderstanding of users on as well engagement. That's all. So further, because the question is why the auditors face a problem of limitation in audit service, user is service with the problem of expectation gap. Which I agree, yes. So this is, once you give the definition of uh, the expectation gap, then you should say what are the reason, what are the causes of this expectation gap? What are the causes? So what are the factors lead to this expectation gap? So already we discussed, you know, the unrealistic expectations, what are the examples? You know? Then you can one by one you can say these are the reasons. So at least the three minimum three reasons. You know? So because uh, auditors uh, users the uh, yeah, you can say the, the the wrong thinking of the users misunderstood misunderstanding of the users users for example users think that uh, financial statements are prepared by the auditors there is a uh, one example for the expectation gap a reason for the expectation gap so the, then the further is another one we can say the users think that uh, auditors give the hundred percent assurance okay this is a problem no? then users think that uh, the auditors guarantee the future uh, viability of the company, future profitability of the company. No, this is a wrong understanding, misunderstanding of the users. So then finally, you can say the um, expectation gap, um, you can say three types of gap, knowledge gap. So then so the, the knowledge gap, evolution gap. Then, so three gaps at the end, we discuss now, the expectation gap, then says three gap knowledge gap performance gap evolution gap so that's all just because that's that's enough but because actually uh, the, you can see the marks for it actually the maximum this kind of corrections uh, the carries uh, <coughs> the eight months so a minimum eight months maximum 12 months so there's uh, this this uh, this way you can answer so if you answer such a way that's uh, that is enough okay no, that's a, this is a way you can approach the question. So then another question you can say. The auditing evolved in the inverter common. No? Auditing evolved and grew rapidly after the industrial revolution in the 18th century. With the growth of the public limited companies, the ownership and management became separate. Then first stop. Comment it. Yes. Actually, the, this I, I got this sentence from your handout, number one. So I, I already explained clearly the, what the story behind this uh, the statement. So what the statement, the statement is there, origin evolved, develop and uh, the, the grieve rapidly after the industrial revolution, the 18th century, because after the industrial revolution, the public companies uh, concept emerged. One number of public companies uh, were established. So the what the what the story became public companies, you know, the public company stories, as I told you earlier, earlier in the previous video lecture. So the management ownership is a problem because the uh, owners are the older shareholders, they are sitting outside the company. So the 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 the, the, the during the annual general meeting, the owners of the company or older shareholders uh, elect a particular group of people or, or group of people. Uh, they are the board of directors to direct the company on behalf of themselves uh, because the all all the number all all total number of um, owners cannot be accommodated inside the company so due to the so those for some reason so they elected a particular body to direct the comp suppose the company on behalf of themselves so the uh, say in the meantime the the objectives of the Company should be maximizing the child's wealth. Yes, so these uh, people, the board directors, uh, should work for the maximization of child's wealth. Uh, but um, but um, uh, the, these people, the board directors, are the employees. So these people uh, try to work for their own benefit, own interest. So they are. 
the particular concept arises the conflict of interest because the uh, different people have the different interest different people means the uh, owners uh, interest is, is to uh, maximize the, their wealth their benefit instead of that when the, what the board of directors do this um, uh, management people do they try to maximize their own benefit so the different uh, interest or uh, there is called a conflict of interest so this um, uh, due to this one that um, these owners this management these owners or rich holders uh, cannot uh, uh, believe the uh, the financial statement which prepared by the management of the company uh, so that's what um, these uh, owners or equity shareholders uh, want to appoint the uh, independent person in bracket in bracket you can put the auditor to examine the document financial statement which are prepared by the management of the company uh, in order to know whether the financial statements are prepared um as per the uh, accounting standard or the older uh, rules and regulation it means generally accepted accounting principles so such a way you can explain that's a that's a that's a origin because the question is auditing evolved and grew rapidly after the industrial revolution in the 18th century with the growth of public to companies the ownership and management okay the, the key term is the ownership and management uh, you should know the what's a the story behind the ownership and management became separate the public companies so first you should explain the what's the meaning of ownership and management separation in the public companies then you can connect the auditor uh, then you can finish your point so because uh, because of this separation uh, these owners uh, can't believe the financial statement which uh, prepared by the this management so in order to get the credibility of the information in order to make sure the credibility they uh, appoint the independent third party that is auditor to examine the final statement which will prepared by the uh, this management so finally that person with the opinion so we should write this is another interesting question it's very nice question very interesting very very interesting question to answer so because uh, in your own way own way you can write the answer give the answer no any format no yes so another question you can see this is another nice question okay last this should be the last question uh, why is there a demand for assurance services the simply the question this is also the somewhat uh, indirect question the why is there a demand for assurance services we already discussed no the demand for assurance services we discussed the uh, um the three or four uh, conditions are there so the immediately you should remember that condition the exam asked that uh, that type of answer that that answer exam and expect so okay another way you can answer in some answer question what are the conditions or factors lead to demand for original friends this is the same question so suppose if, if the examiner asks the question this way so students are happy no they are clearly factors of this because the clear the exam right to give the clear idea no confusion no ambiguity but if they are not a simply ask a question why is there a demand for assurance service? then they trouble what the exam asks but, uh, the person may be asked the uh, uh, necessities of origin or the person may ask some condition or person asks the theories or, yes okay don't think that theories no the exam if they, the theory is a bit definitely the Theoretical way also you can explain the answer, but the examiner clearly says the, the, the glue will be given by the examiner glue. No worries. No. But uh, first question, this question: Why is there a demand for assurance service, or what are the conditions or factors which to demand for assurance service? Then you can say that four conditions are there, four factors are there. The first one is a conflict of interest. Second one is a consequences, complexity. The fourth one is a remoteness. So very very briefly you can explain each and every the condition that's all don't confuse no so the, the another way examine our question you you should remember no we discussed the condition so another way there is also theoretical ways you can explain the demand for ordination theoretical ways so we discussed no? three theories are there agency theory 
positive antigenic hypothesis, then the information theory, hypothesis and insulin hypothesis. Three theories, so they clearly explain the demand for polykinase or so. So then the, the, okay, you can see the rate equations, the, 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 the structure, agency theory, information hypothesis and the insulin hypothesis are used to explain the demand for auditing and assurance. Discuss it, discuss it for 12 marks. So the minimum data is especially, specifically examine them, the, um, introduce the theories, agency theory, information hypothesis and insulin hypothesis. So you have to explain, discuss each and every theory, agency theory, what the theory says, how the theory connected with the uh, demand for the insulin. Second one is the insulin hypothesis. What, what does it mean insulin hypothesis? So how insulin hypothesis is connected with the demand for the insulin. And finally, the information hypothesis. What is the meaning of information hypothesis? How the information hypothesis is connected with the demand for insulin. So the because the the, the, care, the the what I am trying to tell you all, try to understand the, the question. That's the first one. What the examiner ask. So but when we mark your paper, so be very difficult to mark your paper because uh, your answer, your way of giving answer is totally complex. No? So because question is something different, your your answer is something different. So some some students uh, give all the answers. This one or this one. That they give the chance to the examiner. You can choose the most appropriate answer. That's not right. Because you are the university guys, no? university students. You are studying in the superior institution, the society. You are studying at a superior institution. So that's right. You are the way of uh, everything is to be perfect. So please correct yourself. So I hope I'm going to finish uh, this video lecture. I hope uh, you uh, learn something from today video lecture. This should be the, the final video lecture for this uh, first chapter, Reduction to Ordinary Students. Okay, students, bye.